sit with you, eh? Just have a little bit and then you panic, don't you? It's a very odd thing being a farmer because you've got to really care about the animals that you have all the way through their lives. Then you've somehow got to sort of rationalise it in your head. Definitely getting better. He sort of sucks and panics himself and goes into a bit of a fit, but he's definitely getting there. We're a very small farm by today's standards. We're competing against lots of large farms that have a huge throughput of cattle. And so we thought, well, rather than selling them for not very much money in the market, we'd capitalise on what we have got, which is, you know, high welfare, grass fed, native breed and local slaughterhouse. In a way, we started doing the meat boxes just by accident. We had this bull that we were going to sell as a registered bull. Rather than selling it in the market for not very much, we thought, well, why don't we put it through the local abattoir that had just well, started up again? The, the oh, yeah. that's all right. I think it depends on the chop, you see. Yeah. And you see the mojos, they wanted breast mince minced. Minced rather yeah. than rolled, so the, the hannas had their breast mm -hmm. rolled, but... I think I put it on Facebook sort of early one morning that we were getting some meat back and by lunchtime we'd sold most of it <laughs> and there was very little left for us. The great thing is that they're going to spend the whole of their lives here. They're not going to be taken to market and sold. We can look after them and we are responsible for them from the moment they're conceived till the moment we send them off. I, I find it quite difficult, really. Um, I find it easier now that I, you know, we've been down to the abattoir and I've been round the back and seen what happens, and I'm quite happy with the whole process. Sometimes you go to drop cattle off and you don't know what's behind the door, you know, but we know now, and it's, and you know, the, the people down there are really good and they're really conscientious, and that makes life a lot easier for us. We do have a relationship with all these cattle. Reared them from calves, you know, and, and like last winter they were in indoors, just so used to seeing us. He always says he doesn't sleep very well the night before, and I can, I can vouch for that. He never sleeps very well the night before we take something to, to the abattoir. You never ever get used to it, not totally. And I think if you did ever get used to it, you should probably give up farming. You've always got to have that respect that it's a life that you're taking and that you want to do it to the best of your ability. so that they don't get all the chewy bit at the end. You see what I mean? All right, the dogs can have the chewy bit at the end. Go about like that. Oh, right, at an angle or straight across? Straight across, Dad. Come on. It's up to you. You can go freestyle if you like. Look at what you're doing. No, I'm just thinking <laughs> We sell it fresh on the day it comes back from the abattoir and then we sell frozen boxes from the freezer. Amazingly, touch wood, it's been really successful. I think this is the best way that we can produce meat. I hope it is anyway. <laughs>